The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, the town of Judah, for she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant left in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lonely servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is His name. He has mercy on those who fear Him in every generation. He has shown the strength of His arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. So there are just a few of us today because of the smoke. We continue to pray for the end of the fires and the smoke and miracle of rain. Today we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the dogma of the Blessed Virgin Mary assumed into heaven, body and soul, in November 1st, 1950, for Pius XII define define the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But years and years before that, centuries before that, starting in the sixth century, they the church practice you know, celebrated in the liturgy the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And it was just defined in 1950, November 1st, by Pope Pius XII. The assumption the Blessed Virgin Mary, glory, I mean the glorious assumption, the completion, the God's fulfillment of his promises. What he what he began fulfilled in the assumption that in the end of our lives, the end of our journey, there is heaven. We will be in heaven. Amen. 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 Are you there? Yes. You are here. Who wants to go to heaven? <laughs> Not yeah. We all do. <laughs> but I don't want to go there. Preserved. <laughs> preserved. <laughs> body and soul because well, maybe that's she was preserved <laughs> by any stain of sin, original sin, and personal sins along her journey in in this earth. So preserved from the corruption because 
death, rapture of the body, is a result of sin. And she was preserved, the dogma of immaculate conception, she was immaculately conceived, preserved from sin. It's also preserved from corruption. But for us, we have we are not preserved from sin. So we experience corruption, we experience death, the bodily death. We experience corruption. And so, but at the end of our lives, at the end, the coming, the judgment, we will be raised up. We will be assumed body and soul. So take care of your ashes. <laughs> take care of your ashes. Because we will be assumed, assumed into heaven. Very timely in our reflections of the past Sundays, the past Sundays, today is the fourth Sunday, reflections of the bread of life Sundays. The past three Sundays, we, we, we reflected upon the Lord in communion, the bread of life, our bread of life. Our source of life. The Lord said, I am the bread of life. When we receive in communion, when we say, when the priest said in communion, the body of Christ, what is our response? Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. I agree. Amen. Yes, Lord. It is through the body of Christ, our life in communion. And so, Mary is the concrete embodiment, concrete personification of that communion. When she said, yes, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. And she said, yes, Lord, be it done to me according to your word. She received the Lord in communion. And the Lord gave himself to man to be born. That's communion. And now, after that, after that experience, after that saying yes, after that saying yes, yes, Lord. Be it done to me according to, the, to your word, our gospel today. Then Mary set out. Why? Because the angel said, Behold, your cousin Elizabeth, at, at her old age, conceived a son. And Mary, Mary said, Behold, I am the hand of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. And so also for us, in our communion with the Lord, there's always result, there's always action. So when we receive the Lord, when we say, yes, Lord, I received you, then the next step is that mission, the sense of mission, the sense of having God in our hearts. To do something, to do something for God. And so, what's the first? Thing, what's the first thing to do for Mary? She set out and tra traveled to the hill country in haste, the town of Judah, to the aid of Elizabeth. But the word in haste, the word in haste, it is in Greek word metaspores, meaning not just in a hurry, but with worry, with empathy, with concern, <coughs> with concern. So not just you're in a hurry, but in a hurry with concern. That's the Greek word for this point. And so also for us, and that's the first step when we receive the Lord in communion. We have that responsibility to help one another in haste, with worry, with concern to one another. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The second point in our celebration today, to be, to be in communion, is to be always in thanksgiving. Always in thanksgiving with the blessings of the Lord. Elizabeth, here in our gospel today, the infant left in her womb, and Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice, Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you to be happy with the blessings of others. To be happy of our own blessings. To be grateful with our own blessings. And Mary, in response, said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. A very beautiful. They were prophesying in his hour. Elizabeth prophesied, Mary prophesied, with great with thanksgiving, with joy. It's also for us in our day-to-day -day lives. We must always be joyful in the blessings of God. Amen. 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 You look sad. <laughs> you look sad. You must always be joyful, happy in the blessings of others. And to be a blessing also to others. To, to be a source of joy towards each other. Even the baby, John the Baptist, left for joy. Even the small baby jumped for joy. Jumped for joy. And so, our celebration today is a challenge for us. Our challenge. God's challenge for us. God's invitation for us. That as we say yes, there's always the glory of the assumption. The glory of the resurrection. That despite our journey here on earth, we must always cling and hold on to God's time, God's ways, even though we could not understand. We could not understand God's ways, God's plans, but hold on to that. Hold on to God's promises. The end of the, of the gospel, Mary said, He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers. Hold on to that. Hold on to God's promises. Even sometimes we could not understand. Amen. Amen. Amen.